I'm sorry I can't be with you in person. Congratulations on your birthday. Many happy returns of the day. Thank you so much for this award. It means a great deal to me. I've been moved and greatly encouraged by your very generous words about my work. Thinking the unthinkable is lonely work. Twenty-five years ago you were pioneers, and you're still pioneers today. Humanity faces a double existential challenge. Our troubled relationship with our fragile and finite natural habitat and our troubled relationship with our other habitat, the human habitat, the world we've made for ourselves, the human environment. You've been pioneers in your response to both those existential challenges. You've been pioneers in the skills you brought to the task, legal, political, diplomatic skills. You've been pioneers in the new legal ideas and legal structures you've helped to develop. You've been pioneers in the high human values you've brought to the task, including the most important value of all, hope. Twenty-five years ago, we underestimated the barrier that stood between us and a better human world, and we underestimated the power of the Kafka-style guardians of that barrier. Intransigence, ignorance, vested interest, short-termism, entropy, apathy, defeatism. If you think of those things with capital letters, they seem like allegorical figures, like characters in A Pilgrim's Progress. But they're not allegorical. They're very real forces of resistance, very powerful countervailing forces, as you know only too well, you who are on the front line of the struggle. I want to take a moment to share with you the effect that those 25 years have had on my own writing. The first thing is a possible new ground of hope. We can now recognize something we've tended to overlook. Since 1945, there has been amazing human social progress. The living conditions of most human beings in many countries have improved immeasurably, and that improvement is now beginning to spread across the world. And, I won't say it, there have even been improvements in key aspects of international society, of which international environmental law is a shining example. These improvements are caused not by chance, but by the human mind and the human will. We should be proud of actual social progress when we see it, and we should learn from it. We should recognize that intentional social progress on a large scale is possible. 25 years ago, I thought of myself as speaking on behalf of paradoxical optimists. A paradoxical optimist is painfully clear-eyed about the awful problems of the world, but still believes in the limitless, unused potentiality of the human species. Over the last 25 years, a great new obstacle has been placed in the path of us paradoxical optimists, and the focus of my own work has recently changed. Humanity has surrendered to a new global phenomenon in the form of five vast autonomic social systems, driverless social systems like driverless cars. Science and engineering, universal religions, the global economy, global culture and global insecurity. These five driverless social systems rule our lives, but they seem to be beyond our control, beyond the control of politicians and the holders of public power, beyond conventional politics, beyond the control of the human mind and the human will. One might say that the human world is ruled now by invisible hands doing the work of invisible minds. Most troubling of all, these autonomic social systems seem to be beyond our value control, beyond the very high values 
which have been the basis of the time, timeless human effort to make a better human life in a better human world. I think I detect a profound scepticism finding its way into the minds of ordinary citizens across the world. It's a scepticism that is not cynical, but could be powerfully creative. Humanity seems to be saying to itself that something has gone wrong with humanity. We can't go on like this, we being the human race, <clears throat> and speaking to itself about itself. People are thinking that our very humanity is being threatened by the power of unhuman things that we have created. The human being is being left behind in a frenzied race into the human future. A human future that has no known destination and no reliable signposts on the way. Seal has always been a place for paradoxical optimists. The amazing thing is, as I say, that you are still pioneers 25 years later because each new day creates marvelously challenging new problems. People wonder about my sanity when I predict a 21st century renaissance, a 21st century enlightenment, but I do make that peculiar prediction. A 21st century renaissance and a 21st century enlightenment. What the human world needs now is millions of paradoxical optimists, painfully clear-eyed about the true nature of the human situation, but believing in the unlimited, unused human potentiality. Paradoxical optimists full of the intelligence and the energy and the hope necessary to create a new kind of humanity for a new kind of human future. In other words, lots of unthinkable thinking. We need lots and lots of people thinking the unthinkable. <laughs>